Tell me you're scared Tell me you're you think alfalfa <laughs> and it's because their hay um the the one that i had open got wet and i ordered more and i just need to make sure that they have their minerals Ugh. i mean this is clean they go through minerals quite a bit so I don't feel like I'm ever wasting it. This is the one I showed it before, but it has that ammonia chloride to help the boys. So now they do go through that much every two days. So that's just a sign that they do need it. And since I'm giving them alfalfa for today, then of course I need to make sure that they have their minerals and their own bodies are going to um, ask for the minerals so as you can see he went straight to it so as long as you have it available they will go and eat it so we're getting another buck and it's it's going to be actually a buckling I was talking to Twin Pear Farms over Facebook yesterday and I finally decided to order a buck uh, she is having her um, dough deliver one of the many <laughs> that uh, she has available and she is about to deliver this week now you probably wonder why do I need another bug I do have already two of them but the problem is some of them are half siblings or siblings so I really don't want to do that that's one of the things that they don't recommend I've read quite a bit about the idea of doing half siblings, which is totally okay with the whole line breeding, as they call it, idea. But I'm still not too comfortable doing that. And maybe in the future, that would be an option. I'm not saying that I'm completely opposed to what other people are doing. I'm just saying that for me right now, that it's not what I'm looking for. I ordered so. this boy and it kind of got me thinking about a poll about a poll that I put on my community page and I asked you guys what do you want in a goat or what would you look for in a goat if you were to get one and it was quite divided but there were two major points one was you know genetics and pedigree and that kind of thing and the other one was mostly uh, how they look if they're a pole if they're blue-eyed they have the color their pattern that kind of thing that makes them look cute and it kind of makes sense because if it was up to me I would have a goat with an excellent pedigree that had a beautiful pattern was pulled blue-eyed and that would be you know a combination of the two major options or voting options I got now I even put an option to rescue a goat and there were some people that were willing to do that and I think that's a very noble thing and I think that's something that a lot of people are doing when they go into barn sales and stuff like that now you're probably wondering why would you order a buckling that is not even born or why would you and that comes back to what it's most important to me 
And to be honest, if I had to pick one of those choices, it would have been pedigree. And not because I want to say, you know, this is the daughter of whoever and, you know, but it kind of shows a lot more about the kind of animal that they are, how wide they are, how, you know, dairy they are, and all of those things that I am looking for in a goat that really has nothing to do on how they look on the outside. Now, if you look at Mocha and her twins, they are different, but they're very similar. They're Chamosé. Uh, the girls have a little bit more roaning and they have a little bit more white, but they're very, very similar. But I didn't get rid of them because they come from, like their dad, I do not own him. He was sold. I'm pretty sure he's still in the state of Oregon, but it kind of takes me back to, you know, uh, if I wanted to repeat, repeat that breeding, I would have to track down the person that owns that buck now that I think throws amazing kids. So from that amazing bag, I got Rocky. And of course, and Rocky's mom, if you follow Hansen Never Done Farms, is Kalani. And Kalani has amazing teeth placement. She's super easy to milk. Like, Arisha, I mean, she can't even, you know, share enough how much she loves that dough. So to me, that was important. So that's why I wanted Rocky for our herd sire. But having said that, we come back to the girls and I need a really good buck because I love Brie and I love Gaia, but I love their confirmation, how they look, how wide they are, and all of the things that breeders, serious breeders, are looking into when having a goat. Now, I'm not a serious breeder. Now, next month is gonna be a year since I brought the goats home, so I am not there yet. But one of the things I've noticed, because I am very into researching, and so I watch a million videos, I read 100,000 books, but one of the things I've noticed is that the width of the dough is going to give you a great experience at time of birth or it's going to give you the most stressful time of your life and possibly a c-section or an emergency a lot of people consider thinking about width as a breeder standard like somebody who just does this for breeding purposes and selling their offsprings but if you really care about the health of your does and the health of your herd, you want to make sure that your does are wide enough to pass a baby. It's not uncommon that some of these Nigerian dwarfs have five, even six or seven kids. It is not uncommon. Now, Clara had four recently. And if you're new and you missed it, I'll have it on the top of the screen so you can click on it and watch it. So when there's more than, I would say, three, chances are those babies are going to be small to pass. If you're going to put them through the stress of giving birth, I think the least we can do is make sure that they're able to do it on their own. Because as much as I love my goats, if I'm not here, I'm expecting them to be... Um, okay doing it by themselves and of course that would break my heart if i'm not here to be with them and support them but what really would break my heart more is if she wasn't able to do it and she ended up dead with her kids still inside of them which brings me back to the buckling uh I order a buckling that I don't know how he's gonna look like, but I know that he comes from amazing genetics with great width, with great teeth placement, with great udders. So that's the important part for me, and that's why I order a buck from those lines. I order a buck from a reputable breeder that has amazing feedback from people that have bought uh, animals from them and not only went into winning a lot of shows and they have medals and stuff, but just that they trust her enough to ask her questions and she keeps in touch with her people, you know, people that buy goats from her. And I think that's not something that every breeder does. Now, my experience with the does that we got, the goats initially with Hanson Never Done Farms, same thing. I have a question, she replies within minutes. I mean, I can't stress that enough. I 
especially if you're gonna be new with goats it's just amazing to know that the breeder can answer some questions from experience with those animals or experience just because they've been in the business for long for a long time so I don't know if he's gonna be black if he's gonna have blue eyes his dad has blue eyes um, I don't know anything pretty much of the looks of this buckling and I'm really crossing my fingers that he there's gonna be a buckling because there's a possibility that she has twin girls or you know I think she's pregnant with two to three kids so there's always a possibility and that would be great for the breeder but I'm crossing my fingers that I get my little guy this time before Before uh, we order one and she um, deliver before her due date, like a week before, and the kids didn't survive. They had, a, I think it was twin bucklings and they didn't survive and I was devastated. So now this is my second chance and I hope that this time I can get that little buckling, no matter how he looks like. Um, again, what I'm looking for is just amazing, dairy characteristics and making sure that the animals that they produce are going to be wide enough because but sometimes when those are not wide enough they get stuck like the kids will get stuck in random positions and <laughs> believe me some of them they just don't make it because their opening is so small that even for somebody to go in it's almost impossible to see or feel what or try to understand what you're feeling because everything is so tight so just it's one of those things that I can't stress enough for me so if I'm gonna sell a dough from my herd I want to make sure that if that dough is going to be bred and it's going to be used for what she's supposed to be used, dairy purposes, shows or whatever the case may be, I want to make sure that she has an easy delivery even if it's not me in my barn making sure that I'm there to help. I want to be okay with the idea that the person may not want to be involved in the delivery and that they have every characteristic and every possible thing that they need to deliver healthy babies so for me that's the most important thing now they have blue eyes as i was joking yesterday with annabelle and if they're pulled then that's one less thing i have to do is this but them but those things are things that i just have to deal with even though you know the the this budding is not what i want to do but it's part of the th it's part of the process and i can't escape it so i'll show you when as soon as he is born um westy at twin pair farms and she, if you want to follow them they're in, on youtube they're called twin pair tutorials now if you want to know anything about goats then that's where you go to learn not to me but you go to them and you learn from them because they're amazing and she has all kinds of tutorial how to tattoo kids how to um, register kind of navigating the adga website how to register kids what option you need to click i mean they know what they're talking about so i can't stress this enough if you're serious about breeding and if you're serious about dairy find a reputable breeder find somebody that has the knowledge to look at a buckling and say and this is what westy said to me I I can't promise that I'm gonna have a buckling for you. I can put you down on, you know, the the reservation list, but I need to look at that buckling, and I need to look at his width, I need to look at his body structure, and then I can sell him as a buckling. But if it's not up to my standards, then I'm not gonna sell him as a buckling and he's gonna become a pet. And that really reassured me, okay, I'm in the rice, I'm in the right place, I'm talking to the right people and I think in the end it's all about being responsible because that little buckling is going to have her farm name 
So what he produces, it's going to be directly attached to her, her reputation as a breeder, and her reputation as knowing what she's doing as far as goats. So, yes, we're getting a new buckling. No, I don't know how, what he looks like. No, I don't really care what he looks like. I am just hoping to use what I have, which is amazing lines that come from Clara, and just improve it with this new blood that we're bringing to the farm. I'm going to be able to use that little buckling with our little girl, Athene, as well, when she is ready to breed. And I am just so excited. Now, that might mess things up with the girls. I might have to wait until maybe December or January to breed them because that will give him enough time to grow into uh, an interest in girls, an interested in girls buckling. But even if that's the case, I'm willing to wait and be kidding in the summer, which is not what I want. But you know, when life, uh, when life throws you lemons, you just make lemon. So anyways, that is the update about the buckling coming back to the poll. And really, when I'm asking you guys questions, when I'm doing a poll or something, I am honestly expecting you guys to share your honest thoughts with me. I always hope that you guys like to participate in those because that helps me understand a little bit more of the, the content that you like, the things that you like to see on the channel. And honestly, that's what that is all about. So. Thank you so much for being here today guys if you're new please remember to subscribe there's a lot of you that come back to watch the videos but are still not subscribed so under the little screen that you're watching this video there's a red button that says subscribe by it there is a little bell you can click on it and you will get a notification on your phone every time there's a new video However, I'm back to 3 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday, so I hope you still come and check out the, the daily videos throughout the week. So. Remember to leave a comment down below before you go, say hi, leave an emoji, whatever you want to do. Thank you so much again, and I'll talk to you guys next time.